Hello everyone and welcome back to Resident Evil 3 the board game, my solo playthrough as Jill trying to get through the campaign book, the base campaign. And today we are doing what's called Clearing a Path, which is the Downtown 2 map. It's the largest map we've done so far and also the longest in terms of table space required, so I'm actually struggling to fit this in a little bit. Uh, there'll probably be a lot more moving of the camera than usual, so apologies for that in advance. It's split across the streets of Raccoon City and then also uh, upper level, kind of this section upwards, which is going to be very difficult to use. It's actually a sewer section which you might fall into. You can, you can go into it via a staircase, which you should just be able to see down here. But you can also just get pushed down there, trip down there, fall down there, etc. with the encounter tables when we in rooms. The mission is that Jill has to find the emerald and the sapphire, open this door, get through here, there's a C item there, map item there, and get into here. And this tile is representing the uh, cable car, or whatever it's called, that the, uh, yeah, the cable car, that the umbrella marks are using to transport civilians out of the city. So we need to get there. You don't draw attention if you're in there, but there's a lot of streets to cover. Oh, there's actually also one new mechanic. So let me zoom in so we can talk about that. We're going to be over this section of the map to start with anyway because this is Jill's starting location with two zombies bearing down on her. There's some open archways. Oh, that door is actually supposed to be closed. Some of the doors are a bit loose. But yeah, the new mechanic this introduces are one-way doors. So they cannot be opened by events or anything like that. And as the name suggests, you can only go through them from one direction. So Jill can only go through this door that way as a shortcut. And there's another one there that is only a one-way door in that direction. So I think that's it in terms of new mechanics. There's an event table on the door that requires the emerald and the sapphire, the, the city hall door or whatever it's called. And there is an upgrade pistol to find on this map. There's only three B items on the map. Two of them are on the upper streets and one is on the in the sewer. I'm going to need to get them all because one's the emerald, one's the sapphire and one's the gun upgrade. So we need all of them. So this is going to be tricky and it might be long. So let's get started. Oh, the specific win condition for the map is just be in the cable car section and have no enemies on the tile, incidentally. Obviously we need to pick up the C item and the map item on the way, but that's another thing altogether. So Jill's going to activate. Because of the open hallway here, these two zombies are going to react. And that's it, currently. She's going to open this door right here for one. She's going to walk in for two. And we have to roll on the yellow table, so let's do that. Where's my dice? There it is over there. A five on yellow on this map. One zombie. Okay, zombies are in short supply because there's so many on the map already. Uh, mm, closest one would be there. So she's used two actions. She's going to go three, four, because I want to go pick up this AIM. Ideally, we only have like two inventory spaces, but I want to find some shotgun ammo. So end of turn, this zombie reacts. Oh, he's got a... One of my dog's hairs on. And then over here, oh, can you tell this part of my table is lopsided because that's where the groove is? <laughs> it's a 6x4 table, so this might get quite annoying. Let's try and get out of this section of the map as soon as possible. Tension card! A new card called Loose Footing was put into the deck as soon as I started this mission as well. So for Jill's next turn, she's going to move and pick up the A item for two. And then. I'm going to have to come around this side of the camera to see what the AM is. It's another green herb. Okay. I don't think you can combine green herbs in the confines of this game, I mean. I think it's only red-green you can combine. So... Hmm. We've got plenty of pistol ammo. I need, I'm holding on to the shotgun ammo to kill these three dogs. Or the drain demos, or brain demos, whatever they're called. There's one waiting for us in the sewer. Let's see, what kind of route do I need to take? Uh, we need to clear everything. Killing some of these zombies might be a good start. So she'll fire three bullets into the closest zombie right in front. She pushed it back twice. Hmm. One, two. And then this zombie's reacting, and this zombie's reacting to the gunshots. And she'll fire at it again. You just need line of sight, there's no limited range for it. She pushed it back twice again, are you kidding me? Well, okay, we can work with that. So he gets pushed back two, he comes forwards one, and I think that was all her actions, right? Because she moved, picked up, shot twice. 
Yep, okay, so end of turn, the zombie reacts again, these zombies react. I, I feel like that just made things worse. And Tinji card is an all clear, just like that. Let me go adjust her ammo. All right, Jill's next turn is super simple. She is gonna go one, two, three, close the door in the zombie's face for four, and that is it. So we're just tensioning straight away, because I might, oh no, death row. Spawn a zombie in the same square as the character. Thankfully, it doesn't get a free attack just yet. Well, there. But that was the end of turn event that spawned it, so I believe it doesn't get to react right now, but that's annoying because I was closing the door to potentially just go try and kill these dogs with her shotgun shells. Well, she'll try and evade away. She succeeds. Annoyingly, she would have killed it if I shot two bullets. One, open the door for two, go through for three, close the door for four. The door opened itself there, this game is haunted. Bloody Trail. Place a wound token next to any unexplored tokens on all adjacent tiles. Okay, let me just check. Every adjacent tile does not have a explore, they all have set enemies. When an unexplained, uh, unexplored token with a wound token is removed, subtract one from the roll. Okay, so it makes the rolls worse, but in this case it is actually a perfect time to draw it, because it's not applicable. Good. Next turn she is going to pick up the AI here, or rather move on to it. Pick it up for two. My dog barks for three. Picked up some gunpowder. We'll immediately use that to give back four ammo. So that puts us back on 13 pistol bullets. She has two actions left. She shall move here and open this door. End of turn reaction. Is that a corner? That's not a corner. So the zombie can cut the corner, i.e. And then... Oh no, deepening paranoia. If we stay on the same tile, we draw two tension cards. Well, I wasn't planning on staying on the tile. In fact, we can probably beat that zombie. Do I still have my knife equipped? I do, and it's got range one. We shall stab at the zombie, just to make it move. And we pushed it. So I'm choosing to push it this way, which I presume is allowed. Does the knife push? Yeah, the knife does push. I'm pushing it onto this tile, and then we're going to run. I'm going to lock it in the save room. We got the best evade and the medium evade. So we go through here. So that was one, two to go through, three to close the door. And, oh, we're going after the dogs instantly. That wasn't how I planned it, but I guess that's what we're going to try and do while we have ammo. End of turn. It's an all clear. All right, Jill. Let's see, if she moved, opened, went through, she'd be able to fire a shotgun once and then the dog would be on her. Hmm. If I move forward, open the door, backed up, backed up, then the dogs would come through and try and get her and they'd kind of line up. I think that's the better play. So she'll walk forwards for one, open for two, walk away for three, and then walk away for four. End of turn, because that door's open, dogs react, and dogs react by going two, so one, two. One, two, and there's a wall there, so we'll go one, two. I didn't have the wall up, because again, that's another thing to obstruct your view. End of turn event, by which I mean tension card. All clear. And then Jill is going to fire the shotgun. She's got three shells left for her. Shotgun into Doggle. She killed it. Other Doggles react for two. One, two. One, two. She's going to fire the shotgun again. Uh, is that damage or is that still a push? That's damage on the shotgun, so she got that one. This dog reacts, one, two, and then she's firing her final shell. She missed, although she did get the one where she gets to do an evade afterwards. So presumably the zombie, uh, the well, zombie dog walks onto her square, but then she's allowed to dodge out. And then she'll fire three pistol bullets. So she's got no shells left. Push, push. Well, at least she succeeded, but there's no way to avoid her. So, at the end of the turn, the dog... Wait, do they have range 1 on their attacks? I'm going to check. Zombie dog, no, range 0 unless the unless they all clear. I guess, because, like, the different attacks on the attack character card match up to, like, tension cards, but presumably it's the tension card you last drew, because you do the react phase first, right? Or do you do the tension phase first? I've forgotten now. That actually matters. I'm going to check. I'm looking at the quick reference and the react phase does come before the tension phase 
Ergo, that must mean that it applies to whatever you drew on the previous tension phase as to what attack the enemy is doing. So that means it's just doing a basic attack, which means it needs range 0. So for its react phase, it will just move on to Jill's square. I believe. That might be wrong, but that's what it seems to be. And then we tension. Which is not clear. We're just going to try and run from the dog, because uh, now we can just lock it out. So, evade roll. She got a medium evade, more than enough, to go one, two, close the door for three, and we're not touching that event until we're, we need to go through this door, so we'll just move up one more. Can you still see her? Sort of. There's a lot of doors in the way in this one, but she's ending her turn there, so we're going to tension again. It's an all clear. That would have made the dog do its worst attack because it's purple on the bomb. And then there is a corpse on the BM, so she's going to walk on to try and pick up and then move away so that's three times the zombie gets the chance to get up so let's just quickly do that that's a six that's a two and that's a three it does not get up so walked picked up walked off let's see what our first b item is so get some of these cards out of the way b item is it is the eagle parts first which means that's one of the gems i need and then in the sewers is the other gem i need but Replace the character's handgun with the Eagle 6 card. It uses the same handgun ammunition dial. Let's go take a look at the gun. So here is the card for the Eagle upgraded pistol. Still 15 capacity, still line of sight, but for every one bullet you fire, and it can fire up to three because it has the burst fire roll like the normal pistol, you roll one blue, one red, and the red dice has one miss, two push, and then three successes, one of which is a critical for magnums, I believe. So it's very unlikely to miss, raising your ran uh, your average chance of doing that damage. Pushes are still just push effect, you still need the damage hit to actually deal one damage, but it is so much better than the basic pistol. So Jill is now holding that instead. And I think we're at the tension phase for that turn, because I did three and then moved away, yep. Yeah. All clear, but it would have had Nemesis after us if he was on the map. Thankfully he is not yet. New turn, Jill is opening a door. Going through for two, we immediately roll on the yellow table. Uh oh. Persisting on ease, place a yellow on explored token on this tile the next time you enter you roll again. Okay. Oh, but it has a secondary thing. Into the depths, place this character on the square with the key symbol. So we walked in here, it stays unexplored, and then the floor gives way, and Jill falls through the floor into this space in the sewers, and we immediately roll on the amber table for that particular corridor. And I got the biohazard symbol, which does not bode well. Two zombies plus lurch forwards, all enemies perform a move reaction. Uh, do I even have enough zombies? Oh dear, I might not. There's too many zombies on the map. Uh, let's see, do I have any spare zombies? I have one spare zombie, but it's meant to be two. Well, we'll just have to try and remember it's meant to be two. Oh, where do you put them? Let's see doesn't say so it would be one on each anyway so the one that spawns on her would immediately be on her let's see where's there a zombie I could lift I wish I'd known I would have painted more but I didn't realize this had so many already hmm I'll take one of these three down here just because we remember there's a little Congo line so this one would be here and it gets an immediate reaction as well so I went in, I opened the door I went in so Jill still has two actions left and we don't remove the orange check from this because you can fall down to the sewers multiple times and you're supposed to roll every single time on that one corridor. And there's rubble in the way everywhere. Well, I think it's a good chance to use the new pistol then. We're going to fire a bullet into the zombie on our tile for third action. I'll move the camera so you can see the sewers better in a second, incidentally. And she got it with that. So that zombie is gone, so actually I'm going to put him down in the conga line now. This zombie reacts, comes around the corner, she's got one action left, she's going to fire another bullet with the eagle. And she actually missed. So the zombie reacts, end of turn, zombie reacts again. So she used two more bullets, she's down to eight. She is carrying one load of resupply bullets and there's two in her chest. If we get back to that, that is. Murder of crows, do an evade or suffer one damage. She did two mediums, she's fine. So I'll reposition the camera now so we can see the sewers. 
All right, here we are again. It's a little bit awkward to try and get this sir because of how much space is required for this mission. So I apologize again. It's a new turn. We're going to fire one more bullet, taking her to eight left, nine left. No, oh, less than that. Seven left. Okay, I'll keep the dial closer this time. Firing one bullet at the zombie in front of her. She pushes it twice. One, two. That's unfortunate because that's the direction I need to go in. She's going to fire again. She killed it. Good. So she has two actions left. We're just going to go one and we don't need to go that way. We'll go two right over here and we'll tension and I'll try and draw this so you can see it. There we are. It's an all clear. But there's a B item over here so we need to, we, we know it's one of the things I need to beat the mission. So then we're going to go one, two, three, four. Tension card again. We're about halfway through the deck already. Ah, no, not, not quite, not quite. So there's rubble in the way. So as we begin a new turn, we are removing the rubble for one, going through for two, and then rolling on the amber table again. A four on amber, one zombie, and it gets a free move with lurch forwards. So equidistant. I'm going to spawn it there so it doesn't stand on the B item. So that was one action, or was that two? Did I clear the rubble this turn or last turn? No, this turn. So two left. Move on to the B item and pick it up. And we know it's one of the gems. It's the emerald. So it's one of the two that we need. Now, do I actually have room to hold this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, we're now full. And we already searched this. Zombie reacts at end of turn by walking onto Joe's tile and we tension card. Now my plan is just to run away, I think. I don't really want to fight the Drainer Demos, a Drain Demos rather. It's got three health, it does two damage if you get a purple all clear. But if you go up the stairs, there's two zombies waiting for you back on street level, which is annoying. Hmm. Well, we're going to evade away. I'm going to save the ammo. Famous last words. We didn't. Hmm. Hmm. Joe took one damage. And then pushes the zombie away and then goes two, three, removes this for four. And then things become. Oop, let's knock a door elsewhere. Then things become scary because the Drainer Demos is obviously also going to react. Now, when they react, let's see. Uh, no, they, they move two. They're like dogs. Scuttle, scuttle. And tension guard. All clear. That's fine. That's sort of okay. We're gonna go one, two, three, four. Scuttle, scuttle. Zombie, zombie. Another all clear. And then I'm going back up to street level. So I'm gonna to have to move the camera again, but Joe's gonna move on to the stairs and then we're gonna be, we're, we'll have three actions left. So I told you this one would be awkward to film. Jill is back on street level here, but there's two zombies right there. Just waiting for us. So she's immediately gonna fire once with her pistola. You can't see that, but she did get a kill on one. The other one is immediately walking onto her, so she's going to fire twice. Wait, she only, yeah, she has one action left and she can choose to fire up to three times. She'll fire twice to try and guarantee it. Two blues, two reds. Uh, where can I roll? You'll see this. That's gonna knock way too much stuff. Let's try up here. She killed it twice over. So it's gone. She used two more bullets there, no, three more. She's got four left in the clip. And there's a corpse on there and a one-way door. Okay. End of turn event is an all clear. Now, if she opens this door into this B room, it's, oh, that's a door. Yeah, I, I thought it was an, uh, an archway, so it would all be connected and those three zombies down this side would start coming after us, but that's not the case. There's a one-way door above her that would put us into this corridor here. Everything's getting knocked over. Here we are. Ideally, I don't want to search any rooms that I don't need to do now because it might send me back down to the sewer and we don't need to be down there anymore. <clears throat> How much handgun ammo do you get back for using handgun bullets? You get eight, which puts, yeah, okay. So for her first action, she's gonna use up the one she was carrying because we need the inventory space anyway. So that puts us back to 12 bullets. Then she's gonna move here for two, 
open the door for three and shoot, let's say twice again, at the zombie just to basically guarantee the kill. I, I like having semi-consistent, I shouldn't say this before rolling, I, I like having semi-consistency with my pistol. She did actually do it on one of the worst dice, so that's funny. And this zombie will react, end of turn will react again. Walk towards the door, weak tension card, and it is cornered, that's the one where zombies come after you. Locate the tile closest to the active character where there are enemies but no characters. Remove the enemy on the tile with the highest threat level and place them on the character's closest, uh, closest biohazard symbol. It's zombies either way, in terms of... Oh, you, you could argue it's touching the dog tile as well, actually. Honestly, I'll take the dog. It's, uh, it makes it easier for me to get out. So sure, we'll take the dog. Well, she'll immediately fire twice at the zombie at the start of this new turn. Killed it. Would have been a crit if I had a magnum. Dog on her tile, so she'll fire two bullets again, so she's used four now. Killed the dog. I love having a pistol that does consistent damage. I'd say Nemesis doesn't have a chance now, but uh, after this mission, he... Well, no, sorry, not after this mission. After the next mission, he gets stronger. But... Oops, that was 10 bullets and she used 4, so 6 left. Might have to stop by the save room to grab some more ammo. So that was 2, walk in here for 3, walk on to the B item for 4, can't touch it currently. Tension card, all clear. She'll pick up the B item, move on to an E item, pick that up, and then move here. So it's quickest turn ever, but very worth it. Don't creak open the door, zombies will come eat you. So we know the B item is the other gem. It's a sapphire, so now we can open the door. Although we'll have to do an event when we get there. And we got an E item. A third green herb. Uh, can she even hold this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She can't hold this, so we'll just say it's on the floor and I'm going to use one and pick that up in the next turn. It isn't all clear. So for one, she'll use a green herb on her person. For two, she'll pick up the one she just couldn't hold. That I now can't pick up either. <laughs> there we are. So she still has two green herbs on her. And go here for three. Activate the one-way door. And we're back through into this burning hallway from before. I was about to move the camera, but let's quickly tension card first. It's an all clear. And then I can move the camera slightly because we're going to the other bit of the level now. All right, Jillian, you're on the home stretch. We need to get the C item still. We need to get the map item to presumably unlock downtown three. And then we need to get to the cable car. There's two Amber checks on the way and an event, but it's possible. So let's get started. So that's one, two, open this door again for three, go through for four. And that means that we can trigger the event on the next turn. There's also a save through this door, which we're probably going to have to go to and use our one ink ribbon because we're now below half left on the tension deck and if it runs out, we do fail. So, one, two, the event triggers and it doesn't specify, let me just make sure it doesn't specify that you have to do a Nemesis one because in the video game, he shows up at this point. No, I think you just draw one, okay. Top deck. Shortcut. Bloodstained steps descend into the sewers, quickly lost to sinister darkness. Follow the steps. Place any non clock tower campaign path card on the dashboard and flip it to unlocked. Increase the city's danger level by three, or barricade the entrance, discard this card with no effect. So that gives you access to something you shouldn't have access to, but you take a massive hit to the city's danger level, or you discard it. I don't need the help to unlock areas, we're doing well in that regard, so we're just discarding that event card. Now, usually I shuffle these decks, but I think I'll just put that on the bottom, unless the game tells me to like look for a specific event, so that we make sure we see as many as possible. So that was one, two, she's going to discard the gems to open this door for three, and take a shot at this zombie right here. She killed it. This one reacts, and then at the end of our turn reacts and walks out onto her. So, let me just cover that. So we used a bullet, down to five. 
we discard the two gems giving us more inventory space which is perfect we have a zombie on us and we have the tension card all clear we're we're gonna evade to get away no we're not she took damage pushed it well I didn't I forgot to adjust her HP after using the green herb so she's back to what she was at go through for two close the door for three walk over here for four there's no search on this room I just realized to get to the typewriter is one of the amber rooms but we have to go in there anyway because the sea item is in there as well I also realized I haven't moved the camera far enough along so we're gonna do that as well there we go we can basically see the finale here this is the cable car in here so Jill opens the door for one goes through for two has to roll an amber table this is the dangerous roll one of two remaining ones a four we'll just call that four and amber one zombie and it lurches forwards so is there a symbol there yeah it appears here walks onto her tile so she's going to need to expend a bullet to shoot it she got it gives her four bullets left currently so that was open the door walk in shoot so she's gonna actually because she's adjacent to a typewriter just now i'll say i'll use my wong and ink ribbon although i don't think there's enough tension well no because if we actually if we get stuck in the sewers again it will take me forever to get to another save point i'll use the ink ribbon so we'll tension card for the end of that turn but then i'll just go and uh we get three actions next activation fair enough i'll just shuffle the tension deck tension decks shuffle new turn we are moving on to the c item and picking it up and then two uh, sorry three and then back through here for four let's see what c item we actually get it's our first tier two c item is a first aid box heal this character or another character in the same or adjacent square to fine or resuscitate an unconscious character to fine so it's like a super first aid spray I was honestly hoping for a progress item such as Jill's key card, but well. I've also just realized this is an archway, not a doorway, so those zombies should have been reacting, so I'm just gonna like react them three times. Because I did not realize that was an open door. Also has a red stain on it. I don't know if that's pick upable on the camera. So tension. All clear. And then Jill is gonna move here. She's gonna fire once pushed that's good enough actually push and then that one comes forward she's got four bullets left she shall fire once into the police zombie this time she missed police zombie is on her she's got two actions left she shall dodge she successfully dodged no that wasn't on camera but oh, there we are so one two end of turn this zombie is on her the other one is bearing down on her all clear she shall dodge successfully one two three four she can't search this currently but that's okay zombie comes through zombie walks here we tension again all clear so she's picking up this map item for one she has what two bullets left now that map item let me just double check where it gives you access to it shows you how to get to the downtown three. Yeah, that is correct. Okay, so she's got three actions left. She'll come forwards for one. She'll fire one of her two remaining bullets and kill the zombie. With that, the zombie reacts. She's going to just end her turn there so the zombie comes towards her. I'm saving one bullet in case we need to shoot the explosive barrel outside the cable car. All clear she means she needs to dodge so one and then dodge away yep two three four zombie turns around very cross starts giving chase deepening paranoia we if we stay on the same tile we draw two tension then uh, we should not be doing that so that's fine one open the door for two oops smack joe in the face there we are go through for three and then this is the final roll that really matters a two on amber. Two zombies plus ominous bloodstains. Place a wound token on any uh, event markers in play. When you trigger them, you make sure you draw a nemesis card. Thankfully, we've drawn the only one, so that does not apply. There is two zombies, however. 
Uh, I have one action left, correct? One, two, open door and go through for three. I think I have one action left. Jill will use the last of her bullets to shoot the explosive barrel. It explodes for two damage and then any adjacent tiles take one because that will kill that zombie. The zombie reacts and then at the end of the turn it is going to attack her. So she needs to... Oh, and this zombie will react as well. Need to evade. She didn't evade. So she'll shove it through there and take damage. She's on caution. And did we tension there? I don't think I tensioned. No, because it's still deepening paranoia. Was I paranoid about not drawing another card? Maybe. And then we're good to go. We just need to go one, two, three, open the door to the cable car for four. The zombies are chasing, but they're not going to be on the cable car tile, so as long as this isn't a bad card. It is not. We can just walk in. Two, three. I'm picking up the item for four, and then we can count ourselves as over. And we found ourselves. Oh, perfect! Shotgun shells. We can use these. So that was nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. I was expecting to constantly be falling into the sewers, but we got quite lucky and as it turns out, when you've only got the one character, you can avoid a lot of the rooms where you would be rolling on the table. And the yellow table had more chances to fall down than the amber table. So we're into the post game. Our fear goes up by one. The next time it goes up, it makes all cards more deadly. We have to do the like teeth marker cards on, on tension cards and whatnot. Uh, we know how to get to downtown 3, We all, I already had this flipped unlocked incidentally because we found the battery super early, so it's unlocked and we have the item required. I'm immediately using the shotgun shells, because you're allowed to do that between scenarios, to get 4 ammo, so those are going to be back in the pile. We get our 15 bullets back in the handgun, Jill heals for 3 to full, and we can sort our inventory but I'll worry about that next time. Speaking of which, because we didn't find her key card, uh, I don't know if I can even do it. Like as I said last time, we've mostly been doing this in order. The next one in order in the campaign book is Uptown Two. Oh yeah, I'll need to put a star on here as well. Pardon me, I forgot. Let's see, what is there on Uptown Two for us to get? There's an assault rifle on Uptown Two, but there's also red tiles, which are super deadly. Interesting. I guess we'll, we'll maybe take a, a whack at that. I, I hope you're still enjoying. It was a lot quicker than I thought it was going to be. I thought I was going to struggle with this one, honestly. But as it turns out, if you just ignore the yellow tiles, you're doing pretty okay. The eagle was worth going for. That pistol is so much more consistent. Still sometimes does nothing, but it's so much more consistent. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the support. I shall see you hopefully in like three, four days for the next one. Ta-ta for now.